So, this is something you'll hear a lot if you visit a medical ward and listen to what the doctors are saying. Did you get your number this year? Or, I've given up my number in some cases. Or, I'm working so hard just to try and get a number. But what is this mysterious number? Is it a, a code? Is it a ranking? Is it a, a, a Hogwarts letter for doctors? What is it? This phrase, a number, refers to a national training number, or an NTN. It's your formal place on a GMC-approved nationally recognized specialty training program. If you hold an NTN, what that makes you is a specialty registrar or a specialty trainee in a GMC approved program. You are entitled because of that program to structured training, an annual review, your ARCP, and if you complete it successfully, a CCT. Certificate of Completion of Training, which then allows you to join the specialist register for your specialty, which is required in order to be appointed substantively as a consultant. Why does this matter? Why are people so bothered? Well, without one, that makes you likely a locally employed doctor or a trust grade doctor. Now, that's of course not necessarily a bad thing. Many doctors choose to work this way, but these posts don't carry the same guaranteed structure or automatic, as it were, path to CCT. There are other routes to the specialist register, things like Caesar or what is now called the portfolio pathway, but they tend to be longer and require much more independent evidence gathering and probably support from a department or a hospital to help get you where you want to be. There is no onus essentially on the trust or the department to help you progress in your career, whereas there is if you hold a national training number. So what is the number itself? Well, a national training number is a unique identifier assigned to the trainee by their postgraduate deanery. And what that does is it marks your place on the training program and helps track your process. The official definition from the NHS Data Dictionary is a unique identifier issued by a postgraduate dean to an employee who has formally accepted or commenced a specialist registrar training activity. And that is obviously useful for tracking things like how many trainees you have in a given specialty training program across the UK, where they are, what stage they're at, finding out more about a specific trainee's progress. Everything is tied a bit like your national insurance number or your employee registration number, the company or organization for which you work, this is that number that tracks your specialty training progress. And we can help visualize this a little bit because a national training number follows a standardized format and each part tells you something about the trainee and their training program. So it's built in the structure, region, specialty component, GMC number, and then a suffix of some kind. Now I'm sure you can work some of this out, but here's what each part means. The region bit at the beginning is a three letter code for the local NHS training organization. Typically the word we use for that is deanery, such as SWN for NHSE Education Southwest or LDN for London. This is then followed by the specialty component, which is a three digit code assigned to each specialty. For example, 030 is emergency medicine, 031 is neurosurgery. If you are in a dual specialty training program, then both are listed and separated by hyphen. For example, you could have 030034. There are some examples for subspecialties, and then the subspecialty is attached underneath the parent specialty using a full stop, or what we call dot notation. For example, 030.861. And the other modification you sometimes see is uh, for academic posts and we use the code ACA which gets added into the specialty component. For example, in emergency medicine, an academic trainee such as an ACF would be 030-ACA. That's then followed by a GMC number, which is simply your personal GMC registration number. This is a public register, so you can look up any doctor's GMC number. And then finally, there is the suffix part at the end, which is a final code describing the outcome of the program. 
For example, C denotes that someone is working towards a CCT or Certificate of Completion of Training. D for a deanery reference number for core training, and we'll talk about this in a minute. L, locum appointment for training, or CCP, a combination of CCT and the, the CESR or portfolio pathway. So let's make things a little bit clearer and look at some examples. So this first example, SWN slash 031 slash 7838260 slash C. Uh, the first part denotes that the individual is working under NHSE Southwest 031 for the neurosurgery specialty, the GMC number 7838260, and the C meaning that this person is on a specialty training program leading to CCT. For a second example, OXF 030-034-234567 slash C, this would be a doctor who is dual training in emergency medicine and intensive care medicine. They're working in the Oxford Deanery, and again, they are on a specialty training program leading towards CCT. Now, if you're in core surgical training or something like internal medicine training, you will have what is called a DRN, not an NTN, DRN, Deanery Reference Number. Now, why are these different? This is because these do not lead directly to CCT, but they are still part of recognized training. Obviously, you usually have to do CST or IMT as a recognized training pathway in order to become eligible for higher specialty training, which would follow the format of the NTNs that we've just been talking about. The format is almost exactly the same with a DRN, but there is a D at the end. So for example, if we had the code NWE slash CST slash 8315248 slash D, this tells us that someone is working in the northwest of England, that they are part of the CST core surgical training program. Their GMC number is 8315248. And then finally, D denotes that this is a deanery reference number, not a national training number. So just to round things off, think of an NTN as a training passport. Without it, you can work very happily in the NHS, doing whatever a trust will employ you to do for some period of time potentially very many years, but with it, you have a defined route to becoming a consultant with structure, oversight, GMC approval, and a contractual requirement to train you. So when someone says, I'm just trying to get a number, what they are really saying is, I want to be in a recognized, protected training program that will lead me to the specialist register, and hopefully eventually, to work as a consultant. I hope you found that interesting. It's something that I had woefully little knowledge of as a medical student. I had no idea what people were talking about. So thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.